gonna, I'm gonna, uh, you look good, Nick, as well. How old are you, Nick? Because you look, you're in shape and I, you look, you look well. You know what I mean? Yeah, you look, you look, I can tell you're in, I see your WhatsApp profile picture and that. Do you know what I mean? So, it's all fucking CGI, mate. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, I did my research because, um, if anybody doesn't know who Nick Jeffries is, um, director, I'm guessing, director of the, um, I've, I've actually got a little list on you here that I want to, uh, I, I want to read out basically. So Nick has yeah. a new project based in London, builds luxury properties um, around Kensington, Chelsea, Mayfair, Westminster. Uh, some of your clients include uh, Kylie Minogue, I believe, David Gandhi, Nikki Clark. I mean, there's many more on that list that I saw. Um, focusing on rem uh, renovations, extension and new builds, um, interior design, architecture, being featured in the Telegraph and Hello magazine. And here he yeah. is sat with us right now, the man himself. How are you? All good? All good. All good. So it's where does it there. start? Because cause, cause, cause that's, I mean, 10 years, obviously, you, you, you've, when, when, whenever I speak to or I follow your brand, I get, I get a feeling of um, very modern, very innovative. A lot of construction can be dated. Where, where does it kind of start for you? You know, how, how do you, obviously, you, you can clearly see you're at, you know, top level right now. How does it start? So basically, I got into property uh, 15 years ago. Um, and when I got into property, I was a introduction agent. So I used to go out and find opportunities, like develop opportunities where it needed planning to get extensions or loft conversions or full refurbs in London. And I used to work for this guy and he was a little, he was a colorful character in his probably 60s at the time, uh, worth a few hundred mil, big portfolios. And oh, wow. he took me in under his wing. He taught me everything he knew, good, bad, and the ugly. And um, I used to get paid fees to find properties uh, on the way in and on the way out. So I did that for three years and I got to learn the London market because in each area of London, uh, it's all different. It's all pound per square feet. So Knightsbridge is different to Mayfair. Mayfair is different to Chelsea. Chelsea is different to South Kensington. South Kensington is different to Fulham. Every, so it's called, I call it the snob factor. It's the postcode factor. So yeah. higher up the pecking chain you are, the, the, the better area you live in. So I learned about different areas, pound per square foot, valuing properties, adding value to properties, digging basements to add extreme amounts of value under properties. And then I did that for a couple of years. And when one of his buddies said to me, if I find a deal, he will give me the money to do the project. So basically, I found a property in Primrose Hill, North London, and it was a little studio apartment, 350 square feet, tiny. We bought that in this auction at Savills for £250,000. We spent, I think, 30 k doing it up, and we sold it for £350,000. As soon as it's finished, two months time, we made a nice profit. So for me, nice bit of profit in the in the pocket, and then we did another deal. We did, we found a project in Fulham, a house unmodernised. We bought it for five hundred and fifty k. We spent two hundred k doing it up, and we sold it for nine hundred and fifty k. And then off the back of that, the neighbours said to me and my old business partner can you do my house can you do my house and that's when it built up we, we started new and right. um it and that was 10 years ago so, so it, is it on that first property is it is it so you is, is it an, you leverage and do you have like an investor who's who's pushing it or is it is the mortgages involved do you have well, a deal with the investor one, he funds it you make it one. happen yeah those that, that was for a high net worth so basically he the first deal he funded himself a quarter of a million straight into the into the fund, 30k doing it up, and then that money rolled onto the second project. Oh, yeah. And that purchase was 550 or 500, 200 on it, and we sold it for that. And that well, I did two of those deals with that investor, but that those deals got us into the Fulham property market. 
And then off the back of that, I was doing other deals. And I, I was always very good at getting motivated, uh, pretending I was a lot bigger than what I was. You know, me and my ex-business partner, we used to have, we never had any money. We used to drive up to London from out of town in our little smart car. I'm yeah, six, I love that. He's, he's six foot three, built like a British shit house. And uh, we, were, we were heading up to London on the A3 to go and make our fortune in the big city and, um, and uh, creating content. Obviously, back then, there was no social media 10 years ago. Facebook has just started. And uh, we, were, we were sort of, I used to create my own website on Wix. And we used to uh, advertise on um, <coughs> Google AdWords. So I, I used to know that if I spent 10 pounds a day on Google AdWords, when none of my competition builders, what's Google AdWords? They I was never just going to say, AdWords. yeah, if, if, you, if 10 years ago you're dealing with Google AdWords and the likes of Facebook, as a property person, already that kind of that sets you apart from from everybody else because i mean even now you know a lot of big property companies you could you could explain google adword and facebook and you would i imagine you're getting a time for that i'm not really asking you know we're here building properties but the fact that you're building that in is 10 years ago i mean you know that's, that's unbelievable yeah so 10 years ago we, we, it was google adwords and then it slowly built into social media you know and i i you know we all, you know, Google AdWords and websites, we all relied on those two forms of advertising and marketing for many years. And then the rest of the competition started to catch up. And um, then maybe three years ago, when the business was going through a huge change, because I split up with my ex-business partner, and I relaunched the brand as hashtag mu rather than just it was new builds london limited that we, we we closed that company down my relationship with my ex-business partner ended and i i was on my own in the big wide world starting again from scratch basically was so it, it five then, years ago did you say that was three years ago okay, uh, yeah. um, so I, I then had to really you know step up the game you know don't forget three or four years ago the market was crap you got stamp duty increases problems with the mansion uh, mansion taxes and um uh, brexit you know over the last couple of years all this messed house transactions up so while i was sitting in my office wondering how the hell am i going to pull this off i knew by creating content at scale at some point it will pay off you know, I watched a lot of motivational uh, people. You know, I watch Gary V for learning how to create content at scale. Uh, Grant Cardone for literally, he, you know, he, I like I, Grant Cardone is, you know, he's he's twelve years older than me. He's on it, and he's only really taking off massively since he's been creating content at scale, yeah. which then has taken his money making machine cardone capital to the next level because everyone is looking at his posts on all platforms every minute a day and thinking wow i want a piece of that so for me he's really inspirational personally to me you know i've sort of you know the hours and hours and hours and hours of audio books i've listened to um, with Gary V or Grant Cardone or Daniel Priestley. He's a very, very good one. He's got a couple of good books. Um, uh, God, The Key Person of Influence. If you haven't read that one or listened to the audio book, yeah, yeah. Edgar. <clears throat> and it's all about standing out from the crowd. 